two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss? Our toil shall strive to men. <laughs> Gregory, on my word, we'll not carry coal. No, for then we should be colliers. I strike quickly, being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. Here come two of the house of Montague. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will crown as I pass them by, let them take it as they listen. Nay, hey, if they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is disgrace to them if they bear it. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the Lord of ours out of us, say I? No. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir, no, sir. But if you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better, here come one of our master's kinsmen. Yes, better, sir. Lie. Draw of you, me men. Gregory, remember thy swashing blow. Hark, who cut off your sword? You know what you do. Or dost thou draw among these hearts this time? Tell me, Ben Julian, look upon thy death. I do but pick a feet. Cut off thy sword or manage to pass these men with me. But drawn and talk of peace, I hate the word. As I hate tell all Montagues and thee. Have at thee, cowards. I beat the crowd. Down with the chicken. Down with the crowd. Capulet and Montague have thrice disturbed the quiet of our speech and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in hands of old, cankered with peace, to part your canker hate. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague shall know our further pleasure in this case. Come you this afternoon to old Free Town, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Who said this ancient horror when you approach? Speak, have you. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary and yours, close fighting as I did approach. I drew to part them. In the instant came the fiery Tybalt with his sword prepared. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today. Right glad I am he was not at this play. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east. A troubled mind drave me to walk abroad. Where underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooteth from this city's side, so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me and stole into the covert of the wood. I, measuring his affections by my own, which then most sought where most might not be found, pursued my humour not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. 
Many a morning has he there been seen with tears augmenting the fresh morning's dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. Black and portentous must this humour prove unless good counsel can the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes. So please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. Why would thou wert so happy by thy stay to hear true shrift? Come, madam, let's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But news struck nigh. I need. Sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so far? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hour? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out of love? Out of her favour when I am in love. Alas, that love so dangerous in his proof should be so rough and tyrannous in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Where shall we die? Oh, me, what fray was here? Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. He has much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create, O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep that is not what it is. This love feel I. But feel no love in me. Dost thou not laugh? No, cuz. I rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. <laughs> Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast that thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Love is a smoke raised with a fume of sighs, being purged. A fire sparkling in lovers' eyes, being vexed, a sea nourished with lovers' tears. What is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking gall, and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cousin. Stop, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. But I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other way. Tell me in sadness who is it that you love? What, shall I groan and tell them? <laughs> groan, why, no. But sadly, tell me who. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aim so near when I supposed you love. She hath forsworn to love. And in that vow do I live dead, but live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Tis the way to call hers exquisite in question more. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve but as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in death. <laughs> but now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying all what I've said before, my child, is yet a stranger to the world and hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. And who soon marred those so early made? The earth hath swallowed all my hopes, but she, she is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woe her gentle fairies get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest, such as I love, and you among the star. One more, most welcome, makes my numbers more. Come, go with me. Go, as there are such about two fair Verona, to those persons out whose names are written there, and to them say my house and welcome on that pleasant day. Find the man whose names are written here. It's written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard and the Tailor with his last, the fisherman with his pencil, and the painter with his with his nets. But I, I am sent to find those persons out whose names are here in writ, who can never find out what names the writing person had here writ. Uh, I must to the learned. In good time. Ha! Huh. 
man. One fire burns out another's burning. One's pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and behold thy backward turn. One desperate grief is cured by another's language. Take thou some new infection for thine eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that. For what, I think? For your broken shin. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented and... God then, good fellow. God and good dead. Oh, I have prayed, sir. Can you read? I, mine own fortune in my misery. Ah, oh, perhaps you learnt it without book. But I pray you, sir, can you read anything you see? Aye, if I know the letters and the language. You say honestly, rest in peace. Stay, fellow. I can read. Oh. Senor Martino and his wife and daughters. County Anselmi and his beauty assistant. The lady widow of Vitruvio, Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet and his wife and daughters, my fair niece. It was a lie. Olivia, Signor Valentio, and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio and the lively Helena, a fair assembly. Whither should they come? Ah. Whither? To supper. To our house. Whose house? <laughs> my master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Oh, now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet. And if you be not of the house of Montague, I pray you, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest your feet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At this same ancient feast of Capulet, sups the fair Rosaline whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither. And with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show. And I will make thee think thy swan a crow. I'll go along. No such sight to be shown. But to rejoice in splendor of mine own. Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now, by my maidenhead, a twelve-year-old, I bade her come. What lamb? What ladybird? <clears throat> God forbid, where's this girl? What Juliet? I now who calls? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Uh, the, nurse, come back again. I have remembered me. Thou shalt hear our counsel. <laughs> Thou knowest my daughters are a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. She's not fourteen. I lay fourteen of my teeth, and yet to my teen be it spoken, I have but four. <laughs> She's not fourteen. How long is it now to Lammas time? A fortnight and odd days. Even or odd. Of all days of the year come Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. <laughs> that shall she marry. I remember it well. It is since the earthquake, now eleven years, and she was weaned. <laughs> I never shall forget it of all the days of the year upon that day. For I had then laid wormwood to my dug, sitting in the sun under the dove house wall. And my lord and you were then at Mantua. I... Nay, I do bear a pain. But as I said, when it did taste the wormwood on the nipple of my dug and felt it bitter, pretty fool, to see it tetchy and fall out with the dug. Shake, quoth the dove first. It was no need I tried to bid me try. Right. And since that time it is eleven years, for then she could stand high no more. Uh, nay, by the root she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before she broke her brow. And then my husband, <laughs> God of him so, he was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not, Julie? <laughs> and by me followed him, the pretty wretch left crying and said, Aye, <laughs> to see now how a jest shall come about. I warrant and I should, I should live a thousand years, I never should forget it. Wilt thou not, Julie, quoth he? <laughs> And pretty wretch that stinted and said, Aye, enough of this, I pray thee, hold thy peace. And stint thou too, I pray thee, not say I. <laughs> peace I have done. God mark thee to his grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Mary, 
That Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. An honor? <laughs> when of I thine only nurse, I'd say thou had sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now on me. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady, lady, such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower. In faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? Tonight you shall behold him at our feast. Read all the volume of young Paris' face, and find delight writ there with duty's pen. Speak briefly. Can you like for Paris now? I look to like, if looking, liking move. But no more deep will I indulge mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Madam, madam, the guests are come, supper served up. You call me, young lady, asked for the nurse cursed in the pantry, and everything in extremity. Oh, I must hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. Oh, we'll follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girl. Seek happy nights to happy days. <laughs> what shall we speak? Respect for our excuse, or shall we on without apology? The date is out of such prolixity. We'll have no Cupid hoodwinks with a scarf bearing a Carter's painted bow of lass, scaring the ladies like a croaky bird. <laughs> but let them measure us for what they will. We'll measure them and measure them big gone. <laughs> Give me a torch. I am not for the gambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the lot. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead, so stakes me to the ground I cannot move. You're a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore and pierce it with his shaft. Come, knock and enter. No sooner in but every man be taken to his legs. Yes. And we mean well in going to this mark. But tis no whip to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what is yours? That dreamers often lie in bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, that I see Queen Mab has been with you. She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies of fort men's noses as they lie asleep. <laughs> her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshopper. Her collars of the moon shines watery beams. Her whip of cricket's own, the lash of foam. Her wagoner? A small grey-coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. <laughs> her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. I mother mind the fairy's coach maker. And in this state she gallops, night by night, through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Or courtier's knees that dream on curtsy straight. Or lawyer's fingers that straight dream on fees. Or ladies' lips that straight on kisses dream, which oft the angry mad with blisters play, because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she gallops o'er a courtier's nose, and then dreams he of smelling out a suit. Sometimes comes she with a tied pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep, <laughs> and then dreams he of another benefit. <laughs> Sometimes she driveth for a soldier's neck. And then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, of helps, five fathoms deep, and then anon drums in his ears. At which he starts and wakes, and being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. <laughs> this is that very map that pats the manes of horses in the night, and bakes the elf locks into foul stuffish hairs, which once untangled much misfortune bodes. Mm. This is the hag when maids lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear, <laughs> making them women of good courage. <laughs> this is she. Peace, peace, Mercutio, peace, thou talkest of nothing. True, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain begot of nothing but vain fantasy. And more inconstant than the wind, which pulls even now the frozen bosom of the north, and being angered, puffs away from us, turning his side to the dew dropping south. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. <laughs> I fear too early. For my mind misgives some consequence, yet hanging in the stars, shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course, direct my say. Oh, nothing! <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.
Welcome, gentlemen, ladies who have the toes on sacred corns will have a bout with you. Ha ha, my mistresses, which you all will now deny to dance. She is like St. Fishy, I'll swear her scorns. Have I come near you now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have known the day when I did well of my son. The fellow has been tailed as a fair lady in the earth, such as would please. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, you different friends. What is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder man? I know not, sir. She doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady or her fellows shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers, make blessed my rude hand. My heart loved to love, for swear it's sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What dared the slave come hither covered with an antique face to fierce clear and scorn of our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my king, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, Hannah Kingsman, where for me so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe. A villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, tis he, that villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cause, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman. And say, quoth Verona, uh, uh, brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient, take no note of him. It is my will. The witch of our respect shall have presence to put off these frowns and he'll receive semblance from me. It fits when such a villain as a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. What will be my ass? He shall go too. Am I the master here or you go too? You will not endure me. God, your men must fool you. Make a new year and make this. You will take up who you be the man, eh? My go uncle said the same. Go too. You are a saucy boy, so it be. A cheery name, eh? Huh? Patience for force with willful color meeting makes my flesh tremble at the different greeting. I will withdraw. For this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall. <laughs> if I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine. The gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth the rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much. Which mannerly devotion shows in this? For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips, and holy palmers do. My pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayer's effect I take. <laughs> Thus, from my lips I lie, my sin is purged. And have my lips the sin which they have told? The sin from my lips, oh, trespass sweetly urge. Give me my sin again. You kiss so well. Madam! <laughs> Your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? 
marry bachelor her mother is the lady of the house and a good lady and a wise and virtuous i nursed her daughter that you talked with all i tell you he can get hold of her she'll have the chinks is she a capulet <laughs> oh dear i can't my life is my foe's death away be gone the sport is of the best aye so i fear the more is my unrest Hey, gentlemen, prepare not to die. We have a house in Tory's banquet, Todd. Oh, yes, so indeed, but well, I thank you all I ask. Thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches, there. Come on, then. Rest as dead. I could have made a face. May I have been a bed? Come here, then, nurse. What is yon gentleman? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo and Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hint. Too early seen, unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me, but I must love a lonely man. What's this? What's this? Awry, my learning now when I danced with her. Juliet! Anon, anon. Come, let's away. The strangers all are gone. Go forward when my heart is here. Turn back, dull earth, and find thy center out. Romeo! My cousin Romeo! Romeo! He is wise, and on my life has stolen him home to bed. He ran this way and left this orchard wall. Of course, good Mercutio. They are conjured too. Romeo, humor's madman, passion, lover! Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. He heareth not, he moveth not, he stirreth not. The ape is dead, and I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eye, by a high forehead and a scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, the end that remains in their adjacent fly, oh, that oh, in oh. thy likeness thou appear to us. Scarmy appeared himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the blind. Oh, Romeo, that she were, oh, that she were an open, <laughs> etc. <laughs> or thou a popper in fair. <laughs> Romeo, good night. Out to my truckle bed, this field bed, too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go then, for it is in vain to seek him here that means not to be found. Romeo! He jests at scars that never felt a wound. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. Yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. It is not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heavens, having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Sing. 
how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I know you. She's been there. You speak again, bright angel. For thou art as glorious to this night, being all my head, as is a winged messenger of heaven unto the white upturned wondering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him as he bestrides the lazy pacing cloud and sails upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a captivate. Shall I hear more? Shall I speak of this? It is but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? There's no hand, no foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which yields without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all my sin. What man art thou, that thus be screened in night, so stumbled on my comes? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I written, I would tear the word. My ears have yet not drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and the Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either be disliked. How camest thou here? But tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place dead, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings did I approach these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love. And what love can do, that dares love attempt, therefore thy kinsmen have no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their souls. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world this sword be here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued, wanting of thy love. By whose direction fouls thou art this place? I love, at first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him an eye. I am no pilot. Yet wert thou as far as that vast shore washed with the farthest sea, I would adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush to paint my cheek, for that which thou hast heard me speak to night. Oh, fain would I dwell on form, fain, fain deny what I've spoke. But farewell, compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. At lovers' perjuries, they say, Jove loves. Oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinks I am too quickly one, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay. So thou wilt woo, but else not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayst think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overheard, said I was ware of my true love's passion. Therefore, pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love, which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear, that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Who swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love... Well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, 
I have no joy of this contract to none. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning which I've ceased to be, I one can say it lightens. Sweet, good man. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. A sweet repose and rest come to thy heart. Has that within my breast? Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. Oh, I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank, and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. I hear some noise within. They love at you. Madam. Anon, good nurse. Sweet one, did you be true? Stay but a little. I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard being a night all this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Good words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honourable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the rite, and all my fortunes thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam. I come anon. But if thou wilt not well, I do beseech thee. Madam. By and by I come to cease thy strife and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times, good man. A thousand times the worse to want thy life. Love goes toward love as schoolboys from their books. But love from love. Towards school with heavy looks. Romeo! Oh, the falconer's voice to lure this tassel gentle back again. Bondage's horse may not speak aloud, else would I tear the cave where echo lies, and make her airy tongue more hoarse than mine, with repetition of my Romeo's name. It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ear. My dear. At what o'clock tomorrow shall I stand to thee? By the hour. I will not fail. It is twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. But I'll still stay, to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. It is almost morning. I would have thee gone, and yet no further than a wanton's bird that lets it hop a little from his hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives, and with a silk thread, plucks it back again, so loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Oh, sweet, so would I. Yet I should kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow, but I shall say, Good night, till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest. Hence will I to my ghostly father's self, his help to crave, and my dear hat to tell. 
The gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowny night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. Now must I fill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious poison flowers within the infant rind of this sweet flower. Poison hath residence and medicine power. Good morning, Father. Ah, then the ditty what the early tongue so soon salutes me. Ah, young son in argues in his tempered head, so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. <laughs> care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his lim limbs, there golden sleep doth lie. <laughs> uh, therefore thy earliness doth me assure thou art uproused by some distemperature, or if not so, and here I hit it right, our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true. The sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin, wast thou with Rosaline? But with Rosaline, my ghostly father, no. Oh. I have forgot that name and that name's word. Yes, my dear son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee, thou ask it me again. Mm -hmm. I have been feasting with mine enemy. Where on a sudden one hath wounded me that's by me wounded. Both are remedy within thy help and holy physic lies. I, I bear no hatred, blessed man. For lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. The plain, good son, and homely in thy drift, riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly now. My heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. Oh. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and all combined, save what thou must combine by holy man. But which, I... Where and when and how we met, we wooed and made yes. exchange of vow, I'll tell thee as we pass. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Oh, listen, Francis, what a change is here. Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Oh, in young men's love then lies, not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Oh, Jesus Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. Thou chits me off for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil of mine. And that's me very love. Not in a grave to lay one in another out to her. I pray thee, child, no. Oh. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love alone. Mm. The other did not serve. He knew full well thy love did read by rote and could not spell. But stay, young waverer. In one uh, yes, uh, way I will thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn our household's rancor to pure love. Oh, let us hence. I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow. They stumble that run fast. <laughs> Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Not to his house. I spoke with his man. Ah, oh, that same pale, hard-hearted wench that Rosaline torments him so that he was sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Castellet, has sent a letter to his father's house. Ah, oh, challenge on me, like. Romeo will answer it. <laughs> Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letters, master. How he dares, <laughs> being dead. Alas, poor Romeo, he's already dead. Stabbed with a white wench's black eye, run through the air with a love song. The very pit of his heart clipped with a blind bow boy's butt shot. Is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than Prince of Caps, I can tell you. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliment. He fights as you sing trick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. Rests me his men in rest. One, two, the third in your bosom, the very butcher of a silk button. A duelist, a duelist, a gentleman of the very first house of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Picardo, the punter, the verse of the hail. What the part of such antic listing affecting fantastical stuff? These new tuners of accents. By Jesus, you a very good blade, a very tall man. A very good whore. <laughs> Is it not a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pardonnez moires, who stand so much on the new form they cannot sit at ease on the old bench? Oh, their bones, their bones. <laughs> Here comes Romeo. Here oh, comes Romeo. Without his robe, like a dried herring. <laughs> oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishy? Thy senior Romeo. Bonjour! There's a French salutation to your French shop. You gave up the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morning to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio. My business was great. 
And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much as to say such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hands. Meaning to curtsy. Ah, oh, that's most kindly hit you. A very courteous exposition. Oh, nay, I'm the very king of courtesy. Pink the flower. Right. Why, then, is my pump well plied? <laughs> ah, well said. <laughs> Follow me this jest till thou hast worn out thy pump, that when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing solely singular. Oh, single soul jest, solely singular for the singular. Oh, oh, come oh, we just put that folio my wits made. <laughs> Sitch and spurs, switch and spurs are our prior <laughs> match. Why, is not this better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo. Now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. <laughs> this dribbling love, like a great natural, that runs lolling up and down to hide his bauble in a hole. Oh, stop <laughs> there, stop there. <laughs> Here's goodly gear. A sail, a sail. Two, two, a certain yes. small. Hold on. My pen. Good Peter to hide her face, for the pen's the fairer of the two. <laughs> God ye good morrow, gentlemen. God ye good den, fair gentlewoman. Is he good den? Tis no less, I tell you, for the bawdy hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. <laughs> Out upon you, what a man are you? A gentleman nurse that God hath made, himself to mar. Oh, my truth, it is well said for himself to mar, Cortimer. Uh, gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? Mm -hmm. yeah, I can tell you. But young Romeo will be older when you found him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name. Four, four, the worst. You say well. Oh, yes, the worst. Well, very well took it, it wisely, wisely. You be he, sir. I desire some confidence with you. She will invite him to supper. A board! A board! A board! <laughs> what hast thou found? No hair, sir, unless it be a hair, sir, and a lenten pie that is something stale and poor ere it be spent. Oh, an old hair hall, an old hair hall. It's very good meat in length. But a hair that's hard, too much for a score. If it's a hair there, it'd be spent. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, when you come to your father's, we'll sit in the room. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Oh, farewell, lady. Oh, lady. Oh, 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 lady. Oh, oh, an old hair hall, an old hair hall. I what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropes? A gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk. And he will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. I only speak anything against me, I'll take him down. And he will lustier than he is in twenty such jacks. And if I can't kind of, I'll find no such hair. Oh, scurvy knave. I am none of his flirt skills. I am none of his schemes, mate. And I must stand by to and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure. I saw no man use you with his pleasure. If I had, my weapon would quickly have been out, I warrant you. Oh, 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 I dare draw as soon as another man if I see cause in a good quarrel. Oh, the law be on my side. Now, for God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave. Pay you, sir, well. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire about what she bid me say. I will learn. Uh, Keep to myself. Uh, but first, let me tell you, if ye should lead her in a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behaviour, as they say. For the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and very weak deal. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I do protest oh, unto thee. Good heart and good faith. I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse? Thou dost not mark me. Tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. <laughs> Bid her devise some means to come to shift this afternoon, and there she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Here is for thy pains. Oh, no, truly, sir, not a penny. Oh, go to, I say you shall. This afternoon, sir. <laughs> she shall be there. And stay, good nurse. Behind the abbey wall, within this hour, my man shall be with thee, and bring thee cord made like a tackled stair. Which for the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. <laughs> Farewell. Be trusty and I'll quit thy pains. <laughs> Farewell. Commend me to thy mistress. Now, God in heaven, bless thee. Oh, pardon, sir. What says thou, my dearness? Is your man secret? Did you ne'er hear say two make he counsel, putting one away? I warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Well, sir. My mistress is the sweetest lady. Lord, Lord, when was a little prating thing. Oh, there is a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay knife aboard. But she, good soul, had as lief see a toad, a very toad, as see him. I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the proper man. But I warrant you, when I say so, she, she looks as pale as any clout in the verse or world. And that's not... Uh, Rosemary and Romeo begin both with, um, uh, a letter. I nurse, what are they? Both with an R. Uh, 
Mucker, that's the dog's name. R is for R. Uh, no, I, I know it begins with some other letter. And she had the prettiest sententious of it that it would do you good to hear. Yes. <gasps> Commend me to thy lady. I am a thousand Peter, an in four and a pig. Clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Chance she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. Oh, she's lame. Love's heralds should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimble pinion darts draw love, and therefore hath the wind swift cupid wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine to twelve is three long hours, yet she has not come. Had she affections and warm, youthful blood, she'd be as swift in motion as a ball. My word would bandy her to my sweet love, and his to me. But old folk, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh, God, she comes. Oh, what news hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Oh, please, no, stay at the gate. Now, what's we nurse? Oh, oh, Lord, why look'st thou sad? The news be sad, yet tell the merrily. Yet good, thou shamed the music of sweet news by playing with me with so sour a face. Oh, I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. Oh, what a jaunt have I had. Would thou have my bones and I thy news? Oh, come, I pray thee, speak. Good goodness, speak. Jeez, you what haste? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath? When thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath. The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale that thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that, say either or not stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. It's good or bad. Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? Oh, no, not he. Though his face be better than any man. Yet his leg excels all men's, and for a hand and a foot and a body, though he be not to talk of, yet they are past compare. He is not the soul of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench. Sir God, what, have you dined at home? No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches! What a head have I! It beats as it would fall in twenty pieces. Oh, my back! Oh, no, on t'other side, my back, my back! Be true your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. If faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. Love says, like an honest and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. Where's your mother? Where's my mother? Why, she's within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. Is this a poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Such a cruel. Cool. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to Shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband will make you a wife. How comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks? There be a scarlet straight at any news. Hie you to church. I must another way. To fetch a ladder by the which your love 
must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the drudge and toil for your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon of my misery. Go. I to dinner. I you to the cell. I to high fortune. Honest nurse, farewell. So smile the heavens upon this holy act, that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen, amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death do what he dare. It is enough I may but call her mine. Here comes the lady. So light a foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting flint. A lover may bestride the gossamer that wantons in this summer air, and yet not fall, so light is vanity. Good evening to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him, as are his thanks too much. Ah, oh, Juliet, if but the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, and sweeten with thy breath this neighbour air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Conceived more rich in matter than in words, brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love is grown to such excess, I cannot sum up half my sorrow. Come, come with me, and we will make short work or by your leaves you shall not stay alone, till holy church incorporate two in one. In spirit I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulets abroad, and if we meet, we shall not scape abroad. And now these hot days is a mad blood stir. Oh, I'd like one of those fellows that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his rapier on the board and says, God, send me no need of thee. <laughs> and by the operation of the second cup, draws it on the drawer when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Thou? Thou wilt quarrel with a man who hath a hair more or a hair less in his beard than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts having no other reason but because thou hast hazel eyes. <laughs> One eye, but such an eye, would spy out such a quarrel. Thy head is as full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat, and thou wouldst tutor me from quarrelling. And I was so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man should by the fee simple of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the fee simple, oh, simple. <laughs> by my head, here come the captains. By my heel, I care not. Follow me first, while I will speak with them. Gentlemen, go down. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us. Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir. And you will give me occasion. Will you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consorts with Romeo. Consort? Or that thou make us minstrels. And I make minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discord. Here's my fiddle stick. Here's it to make you dance. Don't consult. We speak here in the public court of men. Either withdraw to some private place or reason coldly of your grievances or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure. I... Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt. The reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I now. Therefore farewell, I see thou nurse me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injury that thou hast done me. Therefore turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee. But love thee better than thou canst divine till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. <laughs> oh, calm, 
Dishonorable. Vile submission. Alastair Carter carries it away. Hebel! You rat captor. You walk. What would thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold with all. Come, sir, will you pluck your sword out of its filter by the ears? Make haste, let my men about your ears there if be out. I am for you, sir. Gentlemen, you shall put thy weight Come, sir, your passado. Draw, oh, Benvolio, beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, for bear this outrage. <laughs> Hello, Mercutio! The Prince expressly had forbid this banding in Verona streets. Your houses! I'm spared. Is he gone and hath nothing? What of her? Hi. Hi. A scratch, a scratch. Mally, is enough. Where's my page? Go, Bella. Fetch a surgeon, huh? Courage, man, the hurt cannot be. No! Not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but is enough. Oh, sir, ask for me tomorrow, you shall find me a grave man. I'm peppered, I want for this world. Plague of both your houses. Soon, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat to scratch a man to death, a braggart, a villain, a rogue that fights by the book of Elizabeth. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. Help me to somehow spin Billy what a sharp thing. A plague of both your houses. They made worms meet of me. I have it. And soundly too. Your houses. <laughs> this gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt slum. Tip! Who but an hour hath been my cousin. Ah, sweet Juliet. Thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valour's steed. Oh, Romeo. Romeo, brave Mercutio's death. That gallant spirit hath aspired the cloud, which too untimely here did scorn the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the woe. Others must end. Here comes a furious Tybalt man. Alive, in triumph, and Mercutio slain. Away to heaven, respective lenity and fire thy fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our head, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy that didst consort him here. Shall with him hence. This shall determine that. <laughs> Romeo, away be gone. The citizens are up on Tybalt's slave. Stand not amazed. The prince will do me death if thou art taken. Hence be gone away. 
Oh, I am fortune's fool! Why dost thou stay? Where then? Here comes Lucio. Kibble that murderer. Which way then? There lies that gibble. Come, sir, go with me. I'll charge you in the prince's name. Obey. Where are the vile beginners of this thing? Oh, noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Kibble my cousin, oh, my brother's child. Oh, prince, oh, cousin. Husband, the blood is spilt of my dear kinsman. Prince, as thou art cruel, for blood of ours shed blood of Montague. Oh, cousin, cousin. Benvolio, who began this bloody play? Tybalt, here slain, whom Romeo's hand did slay. Romeo that spake him fair, bid him bethink how nice the quarrel was, and urged with all your high displeasure. All this uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt, death to peace. But that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast. Romeo, he cries aloud, Hold friends, friends, part. And swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points and flicks them rushes. Underneath whose arm, an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stark Mercutio. Then Tybalt fled. But by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge. And to it they go like lightning. For ere I could draw to part them, a stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly. This is the truth, or let Benvolio die. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife. On all that twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who now the price of his dear blood doth owe? Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offence, immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate's proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses. Nor tears, nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. Therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste. Else when he's found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body, and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. So far they put its steeds towards deepest lodging. Such a wagoner's fair tune would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love, performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms, untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties, or if love be blind, it best agrees with the night. Come, oh, civil knight, thou sober-suited matron all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Put thy unmanned blood beating in my cheeks with thy black mantle, till strange love, grown bold, think true love act its simple modesty. Come, knight, come, Romeo, Come thou day in night, for thou would lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow on a raven's back. Come, gentle night, come loving, black-browed night, give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not possessed it. And though I am sold, 
Not yet, in short. So tedious this day is as the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse, and she brings news, and every tongue that speaks but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? What hast thou there? The court that Romeo bade thee fetch. Aye, aye, the court. Long oh, what news? Why dost thou bring thy hands? Oh, well a day. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. We are undone, lady, we are undone. Lack the day he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that hast torment me thus? This torture should be wrought in dismal hell. Hath Romeo slain himself? Say thou but I, and that bare vowel eye shall poison more than the death darting eye of cockatrice. I am not I if there be such an eye, or those eyes shut that make the answer I. If he be slain, say I, or if not, no. Brief sounds determine of my weal or woe. I saw the wound, I saw it with mine eyes. God said the mark here on his manly breast. A piteous cross, a bloody piteous cross, pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gold blood. I swooned it at the sides. <laughs> I break my heart. Poor Bancroft, break at once. Not the prison eyes. Ne'er look on liberty. Vile earth to earth resign. End motion here. And thou and Romeo press one heavy bill. The best friend I had. Oh, courteous, tippled, honest gentleman, that ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? My dearest cousin and my dearer lord, then dreadful trumpets sound the general doom. All who are living if these two are gone. Tybalt is gone and Romeo banishes. Romeo, they killed him. He is banished. Oh, God. Did Romeo's hand shed Tibble's blood? It did, it did. Alack, the day it did. Oh, serpent hearted with a flowering face, did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful town, fiend angelical, dove feathered raven, wolvish ravening lamb, despised its substance of divinest show. Just opposite to what thou justly seems. A damned saint. An honorable villain. Oh, nature, what hast thou to do in hell? When thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh. Was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous place. No face, no trust, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all naught, all dissemblance. Oh, where's my man, Samakovati, ho! These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blessed be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow, shame is a shame to sit. What is a throne where honor may be crowned, so monarch of the universal earth? Oh, what a beast was I to charge at him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Oh, poor my lord, what tongue shall smooth thy name? When I thy three hours wife have mangled it. But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Bad foolish tears back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. 
Somewhere for a week I did. Some word there was. Worse than Tibble's death that murdered me. I would forget it fame, but it would press it to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tibble is dead. And Romeo. Ship. One word, and his ship had slain ten thousand Tibbles. Tibbles' death was more enough if it had ended there. But with a rare one following Tibbles' death, Romeo is banished. Oh, to speak that word. His father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. There is no end, no limit, measure, bound in that word, death. No woe can that woe sound. Where is my father and my mother knows? Weeping and wailing over Tibbet's course. Will you go to them? I will bring you thither. Wash they his wounds with tears. Mine shall be spent when theirs are dry. For Romeo's and she. Take up the court. Oh, you are the guy. Both you and I. For Romeo is exiled. He made you for a highway to my bed. But I am made. Die, Megan Widower. Come, court. Come, nurse. Up to my wedding bed. And death, not Romeo, take my maiden bed. Hide to your chamber. I'll fetch Romeo to comfort you. I watch well where he is. Hark ye. Your Romeo will be here at night. I'll do him. He is head of Lawrence's cell. Oh, find him. Give this ring to my true knight and bid him come to take his last bed. Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Father, what is this? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance of my hand that I yet know not? True familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment banished from his lips, not but his death. But body's banishment. Oh. Banishment. Be merciful, say death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banish it. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence banished is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banishment is death misturned. Calling death banished, thou cuts my head off with a golden axe and smiles upon the stroke that murdered. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. It's torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing may look on her. But Romeo may not. He is banished. Oh, friar, the damned use that word in oh, hell. Oh, fond madman, let me but speak a little. Thou canst not speak of that, thou dost not feel. 
Grandpa was young, was I? Julia died home. An hour but married, tybalt, murdered, doting like me, and like me, banished. Then mightst thou speak. Then mightst thou tear thy hair and fall upon the ground as I do now. Oh. <laughs> Taking the measure of an unmade grave. <laughs> Good Romeo, hide thyself. Hark how they knock. Who's there? <laughs> Romeo, rise, thou wilt be taken. Stay a while. Stand up. Run to my study. <laughs> by and by, God's will, what simpleness is this? I come, I come. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? <laughs> Welcome, then. Oh, Holy Friar. Oh, tell me, Holy Friar, where is my lady's lord? Where's Roman? There on the floor with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even my mistress's <laughs> Just in her case. Oh, woeful sympathy, piteous predicament. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up. Stand up. Stand that you be a man for Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an hole? Nurse. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. That's the end of all. Spake's the whole Juliet. How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer and I have stained the childhood of our joy with blood removed but little from her own? Where is she, and how doth she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed, and then starts up and tibbled calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her, as that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, fire, tell me. In what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I may sack the hateful oh, man. I just pretend that thou art man, thy home cries out, thou art the tears of women, womanish. How oh, thy, uh, thy wild acts denote the unruly behavior of a beast. Art thou a man? Thou hast amazed me. I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt, and wilt thou slay thyself? And slay thy lady that in thy love lives? What round thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive. There art thou happy. The law that threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it to exile. There art thou happy. Go get thee to thy love as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence and comfort her. And look thou stay not till the watch be set. For then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Go before and ask, commend me to thy lady, bid her hasten all the house to bed, which present sorrow makes them apt unto Romeo is coming. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. My Lord, I tell my lady you will come. Do so, uh, and bid my love prepare to try. Yes, sir. A ring she bid me give you, sir. Ah, you make haste, for it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Hold. Go hence. Good night. And here stands all your state. Sojourn in Mantua. I'll find out your man, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you that chance is here. Give me your hand. Tis night. Farewell. Good night. But that a joy past joy calls out on me. It were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out so so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look here, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly. Well, so did I. Well, we were born to die. Tis very late. 
She'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been a bed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she's mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris! I will make her desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me, nay more, I doubt it not, wife. Go you to her, I'll go to bed. A creature here of my son Paris, love, and bid her mark me. A Wednesday next. But, sir, what is it? Monday, my lord. Monday? Oh, 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 oh. well, Wednesday is too soon. A Thursday, let it be a Thursday. Tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this speed? We'll make no uh, great ado. Uh, a friend or two for her cute for being slain so late. It will make may the thought we hold him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we revel much. Therefore, we'll have some half a dozen friends and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I went to Thursday with tomorrow. Well, get you gone. A Thursday be it, then. Get you to Juliet. Uh, you go to bed. Uh, prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. Like to the chamber. Will thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of an ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight. I know it, I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales, to be to thee this night a torchbearer, and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore stay. Thou needs not to be gone. Let me detain, let me be put to death. I am content so thou wilt have it so. I'll say yon grey is not the morning's eye. It is but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. No, that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our head. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. Oh, yes, my love, it's tall. It is not dead. It is, it is. Her hands be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing shafts. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divided us. So now be gone, more light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our way. Madam, yes. your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke, be wary, look about. Then window let day in, and let life out. Farewell, farewell. One kiss and I'll descend. Oh, 
thought it had gone so long. Lord, my husband, friend. I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in one minute there are many days. Oh, by this count, I shall be much in years that I again behold my Romeo. Farewell. Well. I will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings, love, to him. Is this though we shall ever meet again? I doubt it, Luke. And all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. I have been able to find you so. Methinks I see thee. Now thou art so low. As one dead in the bottom of a pool. Either my eyesight fails. Or thou looks pale. And trust me, love. In my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu. Oh, fortune, fortune. All men call me fickle. If thou art fickle. What dost thou with him that is renowned for thee? Be thick on fortune, for then I hope thou wilt not keep him long. But send him back. Oh, daughter, are you up? Where's the cause? Did my lady mother, is she not down so late or up so early? What unaccustomed cause procures her, you know? Why, how now, Julia? Oh, madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. What would you wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, that was not make him live, therefore have done. Much grief shows much of love, but more than grief shows still too much of grief. Yet let me weep for such a feeling, lots. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep. Feeling so the loss? I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weeps not so much for his death, as but the villain lives that slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain and he be many miles asunder. God pardon me. I do with all my heart. But now I bring thee joyful tidings, sir. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, I beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child. One who, to put thee from thy heavens, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy which thou expectest not. Now I look not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Marry, my child, early next Thursday morning. The gallant young and noble gentleman of the county Paris at St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. How by St. Peter's church, and Peter too, you shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste, that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. He's on you, St. Peter. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself. And see how he will take it at your hands. Hello, wife. Have you delivered to her, I decree? I sir, and she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. So, uh, take me with you. Take me with your wife. How? Will she not? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count out the less? How worthy as she is that we have brought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate. 
but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How, 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 chop logic? What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud. Oh, Miss this minion, you thank me, no thank you, no proud me, no prouds. But better if I join John Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag the other hurdles in her. Out your green sickness, Carrie, out your baggage, your telephone. Are you mad? But, but I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang the young baggage, disobedient wretch, I'll tell thee what. Get to church on Thursday, or never have to look me in the face. Oh, God, I held in. God in heaven, bless her. Oh, no. You are to blame, my lord, to rate herself. Her why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue, good prudence. Smell her with his answers. Go. I speak no truth. Oh, God, God damn. I may not one speak. This sharp, mumbling fool, out of your gravity, or a gossip's vulva. Here we need it now. You are too hot. God's brain, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone in company, ever my care with me to have her match. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, she answered, I'll not wed. I cannot love. I am too young. I pray you pardon me. Whoa. But you will not wait, I'll pardon you. Grace, when you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think can't I do not use the jest. Thirty is near. Lay hand on heart, advise. And if it be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And if it not, hang, beg, starve. Die in the streets, forward, soul, I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. No, what is mine shall never do thee good. Look to it, but think so. I'll not be forsworn. Is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Or if you do not, make the bridal bed in that dim monument to a tribute lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I've done with thee. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, nerves! How shall this be prevented? My husband is on earth, my faith in heaven. How shall that faith return again to earth, unless that husband send it me from heaven by leaving earth? Oh, come what may come soon be. Alack, alack, that heaven should practice stratagems upon so soft a subject as myself. What says thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Oh, some gambled nerve. Here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing that he dares ne'er come back to challenge him. Or if he do, he needs must come by stealth. Then, since the case so stands as now it does, I think it best to marry it with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish club to me. An eagle, madam, has not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris, man. Bishop, my very heart, I think you are happy in the second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead. Or you're as good he were as being here and you no use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too. Well, speak through them both. Amen. What? Well, you have comforted me marvelous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence Sell, to make confession and to be absolved. Marry, I will. And this is wisely done. Ancient damnation. Almost wicked pain. Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn? Or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which he hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counsellor. Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. Thou to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die.
On Thursday, sir, the time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course, I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talked of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom haste our marriage, to stop the inundation of her tears, which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Uh, look, sir, here comes the lady towards myself. Happily well met, my lady and my wife. That may be so, and I may be your wife. That may be, must be love on Thursday next. What must be shown? That's a certain text. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse you. Till then, adieu. And keep this holy kiss. Why hast thou so come weep with me, past hope, past care, past hope? Oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it, on Thursday next be married to this country. Tell me not, Friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thou, thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise. And would this night thou help it presently? Be not so long to speak. I long to die of what thou speaks. Speak not a remedy. Oh, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope. If rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the will, the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away the shame. And if thou darest, I'll give thee a remedy. Oh, it may leap rather than marry Paris from out the battlements of yonder tower. Oh, they may go into a new-made grave. And hide me with a dead man in his shroud. Things which to hear them told or made me tremble. And I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold then. Go home, be merry. Give consent to marry, Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night see that thou lie alone. Let not the nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial. Being then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off, and presently through all thy veins will run a cold and drowsy humour. No repulse, nor heat, nor breath shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall pale to paley ashes, thy eyes' windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life. And in this borrowed semblance of shrunk death, Thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to take thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. And as the manner of our country is, in thy best robes, unopened on the, on the bier, thou shalt be borne to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, Against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua, and this shall free thee from this present shame, if no um, joy or, or womanish fear abate thy valour in the action. Oh, give me, give me, tell me not of fear. Go hence, be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I send a fire with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help a fault. Farewell, dear father. Where she comes from shrift with merry look. Hello, my headstrong. Where have you been getting? Well, I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests. 
and am enjoined by Holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Send to the county, don't tell him of this. I'll have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. I met the youthful lord at Lawrence's cell, and gave him what become in love I might, not stepping all the bounds of modern. Boy, I am glad only if this is well, Stella. This is as it should be. Let me see the county. I marry go, I say, and fetch him thither. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet? To help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow. No, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. By those attires are best. But gentle nurse, I pray thee leave me to myself tonight. For I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state. Which well thou knowest cross and full of sin. What are you busy? Oh, need you my help? No, madam. We have culled such necessaries as of a hopeful for our state tomorrow. So please let me now be left alone. And let the nurse this night sit up with you. For I'm sure you have your hands full all in this. So sudden, Lisa. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast the need. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I call him back again to comfort me. <laughs> what should she do here? My dismal scene, I need some stack alone. Bye. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? This shall forbid it. Lie down there. Would it be a poison which the friar subtly had ministered to have me dead? Lest in this marriage he should be dishonored, because he married me before to Rome. I fear it is. And yet methinks it should not. For he has still been tried. Holy now. Who oh, if when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me. For oh, there's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place? Therefore, this many hundred years, the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed. Their bloody tippled yet but green in earth lies festering in his shroud. Well, as they say, it's some hours in the night. Spirits resolve. Alack, alack, is it not like that I so early waking, what with loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth? The living mortals hearing them run mad. Or if I wake, shall I not be distraught? Invalid with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled tippet from his shroud, and in this rage, 
Let me like go. Um, this do I drink. Take these keys and get more spices, Ness. They call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Oh, come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock is closed. <laughs> the curfew bell has rung. The looks of the baked meat's good. Angelica, spare not to cost. <laughs> go, you cot queen. Go, get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick tomorrow after this night. Yeah, not a whit. But <laughs> I have watched there now all night for less calls and not been sick. Go, wait and soon it. Go and trim her up. I'll go and share food with, with fairies. Hey, make haste, make haste. The bride come already. Make haste, my fairies. But, mistress, Juliet, but I warrant her son. Why, lamb, why, lady, why, you snug a bed? I love, I say, madam, sweetheart, I grind. <laughs> but not a word. You take your pennyworths now, sleep for a week. The next night, I warrant the county Paris hath taken up his rest, that you shall rest but little, God forgive me. Madam, sound as she has kind of just wake her. Madam, 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 I let the county fright you in your bed. He'll fright you up in faith, will it not be? Dressed and in your clothes and down again. I must need to wait. Madam, madam, madam. Yes. Alas, help, help, my lady's dead. Oh, well, a day that ever I was born. So my poor lady, oh, my lord, my lady. I it here. Oh, lamentable day. Oh, look, look, oh, heavy day. Oh, Lord, revive, look up and let him die with me. Push, help, hey, help, bring to help, help. Oh, my lord is come. She's dead, she's dead. The nasty day, she's dead. Oh, let me see her. Oh, to lost is cold. Her blood is settled. But her joints are stiff. The life and these lips have long been separating. Death lies on her. Like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower in all the fields. Oh, lamentable day, oh, woeful time. Death that hath taken her hands to make me wail, ties up my tongue, and will not let me speak. 
If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to see, and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah me, how sweet is love itself possessed when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Perona. How oh, now, so. Balthazar? Dost thou not bring me letters from the prior? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How doth my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. And she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Cagle's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. But pardon me for bringing these ill news. Since you did leave it for my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars! Now, nurse, my lodging. Get me ink and paper. And hire post horses, I will hence to I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Touch thou art deceived, leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the father? No, no matter, get thee gone. And hire those horses, I'll be with thee straight. Well, Julie. I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for me. Oh, the mist of thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary and hereabouts of the wells which late I knew. With tattered weeds and overwhelming brows coming with simples. Meagre were his looks. Sharp misery had worn him to the bone. And about his needy shop a beggarly account of Empty boxes, green earthen pots, bladders, and musty seeds were thinly scattered to make up a show. Noting this penury to myself, I said, and if a man did need a poison now, who saying his present death in natural, here lives the caitiff wretch would sell it him. Oh, this same thought did but forerun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me. As I remember, this should be the house. Hey, call it the beggar's shop is shut. What ho! Apothecary! You call him so loud. Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. <laughs> ho! There is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins, that the light weary taker may fall dead. Such fatal judge I have. But Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starve it in thine eyes, contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy law, for thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich, then be not poor, but break it. My poverty, but not my will, consent. I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is I go. Worse poison to men's souls than these poor compounds that thou mayst not sell. I sell thee poison. Thou hast sold me one. My food. Farewell, get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial, and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee.
The same should be the voice of Friar John. Ah, welcome for Mantua. What says Romeo? Or if his mind be writ, give me his letter. Go in to find the barefoot brother out. One of our order to associate me here in the city, visiting the sick and finding him. The searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth, so that my speech to Mantua there was still. Who oh, bear my letter then to Romeo? I, I could not say. Oh, here it is again. Nor get a messenger to bring it thee, so fearful were they of infection. Oh, unhappy fortune, by my order, this letter was not nice, but full of charge and dear import, and the neglect he had made do much danger. Fire, John, go hence, get me an iron crow, and bring it straight unto myself. But I will go and bring it. Now must I to the monument alone, that in these three hours will fair Juliet awake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo's had no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua and keep her in my cell till Romeo come. Poor living soul clothed in a dead man's tomb. Give me the talk for a handsome stand aloof. Yet put it out, for I would not be seen. And the young youth was laid all along, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground. So shall thou foot upon the churchyard tread, being loose and firm with digging up of graves, but thou shalt hear it. Whistle then to me a signal that thou hearst something approach. Give me the power. Do as I bid thee go. I'm almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard. Yet I will adventure. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, well, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water lightly I will dew. For oh, wanting that with tears distilled by moans, oh, the obstacle is that I for thee will keep, lightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. Why gives warning something to approach? What wonders this way to light cross my obstacles and through love's right? What an approach! Muffle me night or while. Give me the lattice and the wrenching iron. Ho! Take this letter. Early in the morning, see that I've delivered it to my lord and father. Give me the lamp. Upon thy life, I charge thee. Whate'er thou hearst or seest, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in my cause. Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger her precious ring, a ring that I must use in dear employment. Therefore, hence be gone. But if thou jealous dost return to cry what thy father shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint. And strew this hungry churchyard with thy lips. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble ye. Sir, shalt thou do me friendship? Take thou that. Live. And be prosperous. And 
Very well, good fellow. For all this saying, I'll hide me here about. Thou deathest of war. Thou womb of death. Gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus, I enforce thy rotten jaws. And in this fight I'll cram thee with more. Stop thy unhallowed trial, vile monk. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. I indeed I must, for therefore came I hither. Good gentle you tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me. Take upon these gone, let them affright thee. I beseech thee. Put not another sin upon thy head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone. Stay not, be gone. Live, and hereafter say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. I do defy thy conjurations and apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Then have it thee, boy. <laughs> I am slain. Get that be merciful. Name him, do yet. In straight line. Let me peruse his face. A few shirts, kinsman, noble count in Paris. What said my man and my betossed servant did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Julia. Said he not so? Or did I dream it so? Or am I mad hearing him talk of Julia to think it was so? Oh, give me thy hand. One writ with me in sorrow misfortune's book. I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. A grave? Oh no, a lantern slaughtered you. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Death lie thou there, by a dead man in turn. How oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death? Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death that has sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Julian, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? And that the lean of horrid monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour. For fear of that, I still will stay. And never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest. And shake the yoke of inauspicious stars 
from this world of weariness. Eyes, look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, oh you the doors of breath. Seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing the death. Man's favorite guide. Now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick weary bark. Here's to my love. Oh, true, Apothecary. Thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss. I die. You must be it. How oft tonight of my old feet stumbled at graves. Who's there? A friend that knows you well. Oh, tell me, good my friend, what torches yon, as I discern it burneth by the Capel's monument. It doth so, holy sir, and there's my master, one that you love. Who is it? Romeo. How long has he been there? Full half an hour. Oh, fear comes upon me, and much I fear some ill unthrifty thing. Alack, alack, what blood is this that stains the stony entrance to the sepulchre? Romeo! Oh. Romeo! Oh, pale! Oh, what an unkind eye, guilty of this lamentable chance! The lady stirs. So comfortable, John. Where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? Oh, I hear some noise, lady, come from this nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intent. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. I will dispose of thee amongst a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question. Oh, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Go, get thee hence. For I will not leave. Up close in my children's hand. Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, child, drunk all, and left no friendly drop to help me on. Kiss thy lips. Have you some poison yet? Doth hang on them to make me die with a restored. Thy lips are warm. Lead by which way? He knows, then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger. There is thy sheath. I rust. And let me die.
Will be these enemies. Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords, too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Oh, Brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for, to, for no more can I demand. But I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold, that whiles Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be sent. As that of true and faithful duty. As rich Sir Romeo by his lady lie, poor sacrifices to our enmity. A glooming peace this morning will it bring. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. <laughs>